recording. Um, okay, so today, in for the rest of today's lecture, we're going to start with lecture set seven. So the goal of today's lecture will be to introduce the type of data that we would see um, in a factorial design. So this would be a situation where we're going to use what is called a two-way ANOVA, and I'll talk more about what that means in a minute. And then what we're going to try and do is get through the description of what is called an interaction diagram so that we can talk about simple main and interaction effects. All right, so the basic premise of this lecture set is the same as what we had seen beforehand. So effectively, we are interested in making a comparison among a set of means. So we have three or more means. We want to know if a difference exists among these means. So we design an ANOVA to answer the question. Now, in this particular unit, what differentiates this type of study from the previous studies is that instead of having one explanatory value, we now have two explanatory values. So we have seen in the one-way ANOVA case, one explanatory value, one response variable. In the completely randomized block design, we have seen one explanatory value, one confounding variable, and one response variable. And now we're talking about two explanatory variables, one response variable. So this is the, the main differentiation between the two. So there's two different explanatory variables, and we want to make a statement about the mean differences across the levels of both of them. Now, this creates what is called an interaction effect. And we're going to talk about this in a little while. But essentially, because you have explanatory, let's say explanatory variable A, and it has so many levels associated with it, and you want to look at the mean difference across those, and you have explanatory variable B, which has so many levels associated with it, and you want to make a statement about the differences across those levels, there's also all of the possible interactions between the levels of each variable. So we also want to talk about the differences across those. So this is actually a very unique style of ANOVA compared to what we saw before because of the presence of these interactions. So it drastically increases the amount of comparisons that we're going to look at and actually increases the number of different F tests that will roll out of the analysis of variance of this type of system. Okay, so here's an example of a data set that would lend itself to um, a two-way ANOVA type experiment. So in this data set, we have um, the Iron Byron golf ball hitting machine. Okay, so this golf ball hitting machine is hitting four different types of golf balls, which we call brand A, B, C, and D. And it's using two different types of clubs, a driver and a five iron. The response variable is how far the ball has traveled. So inside the table, all of these different values here, these are the responses. Okay, so this is what we're measuring. That's the variable of interest. The brand of the golf ball can be explanatory variable A. It could also be explanatory variable B. It's just one of the explanatory variables. And the club is the other explanatory variable. Okay. So we have golf ball brand and we have the and the type of club. So two explanatory variables, we have one response. You can actually see from the setup in the table that you have averages that are going to be associated with both the brand type, the club type, and the combination of the two. Right. So if we look at this whole column here, you can see that this is going to be X bar for brand A, right? But then if we look at all of the values here, which I'll circle in green, okay, this would be X bar for the driver type, for example. And then if we consider only the values in this column here, so in blue, 
This is X bar for the brand and the driver. So there's three different kinds of means that are rolling out of this experimental design. There's a main effect or there's an, a mean for the brand of the golf ball. There's a mean for the club that we're hitting with. And there's a mean for the interaction between the two. So the four values that are sitting in that interaction spot. So when we look at the driver and brand A combination, the four numbers that are highlighted in blue, those are called repli uh, replications. So we've repeated the experiment four times at each treatment combination. Okay, so let's summarize what we have seen in the previous table. So question one asks, what are the factors? So we have two factors, club and golf ball brand. Two, how many levels does each factor have? So the level has the same definition as it did before. So club has two levels, driver slash five iron, three. Or no, not three, sorry. And then the golf ball brand has four levels, A, B, C, and D. Okay. So right off the start, we might be interested in saying, is there a difference between the average distance the driver hits the ball and the five iron hits the ball? Not an overly um, interesting question because everyone that has played golf and can kind of hit consistently is gonna hit further with a driver than with a five iron. The next question is, is there a difference among the, the distance that the brand of the golf ball travels? And that's a more interesting question because if you're hitting the same, if the same machine is hitting different brands of golf balls with the same club, if some balls travel further than others, you might be interested in purchasing that ball over the other ball. Part three asks, how many treatment combinations are there? So treatment combinations refer to the interactions across the levels of the factors. So we have um, treatment combinations are number of levels of factor a multiplied by number of levels of factor B, okay? So in this particular situation, we have two times four equals eight treatment combinations. Okay. And those treatment combinations are, for example, uh, driver comma brand A, driver comma brand B, driver comma brand C, driver comma brand D, five iron comma brand A, five iron comma brand B, five iron comma brand C, and five iron comma brand D. Right. Okay, and then finally it asks, what is the response variable? The response variable is what we are measuring, which is distance ball traveled. And this is most likely in yards because yards is the unit that's used in golf. All right, so in 
a, a factorial design, and in particular, a two-way factorial design, there's a number of different effects that we can talk about. So there's a simple effect, a main effect, and an interaction effect. The effects that we are going to be most interested in studying are the main effects and the interaction effect. But to understand what a main effect is and understand what an interaction effect is, we have to start by defining the simple effect. Okay, so to illustrate these definitions, we're going to use the simplest, uh, the simplest possible factorial treatment design, which would be a two by two factorial treatment design. So you can see in the table at the bottom of slide five, we have two factors, factor A and factor B. Each factor has only two levels associated with it. So when I say two by two factorial design, I'm referring to the number of levels of A times the number of levels of B. Okay. And so that's where the two by two idea comes from. In the golf ball driving example, that would be a four by two factorial design because you have four golf ball brands and then two club types. Okay, in the table at the bottom of slide five, we have the sample averages. Okay, so for example, 20, well, actually I'll write it properly. So X bar low, low equals 20. X bar low, high equals 40. X bar high, low equals 30 and X bar high, high equals 50. Okay, so this is the table of means. Okay, so the simple effect is effectively just the difference in the means between two levels of one factor conditioned on the level of the other factor. Okay, so for example, let me bring the means from the previous table over so that we have them here. Okay. So these are the four means. And then also let's just sketch the table really quick so that we can see it. It just helps with visualizing the problem. So here's A, here's low high, here's B, here's low high. So this is 20, 40, 30, 50. Okay, so for example, the simple effect of factor A for low factor B is 40 minus 20. Okay, so we're conditioned on low factor B and we're just taking the differences between a high factor A and a low factor A. So that's where this value 20 comes from. The simple effect of factor A for high factor B is 50 minus 30. Okay, so now we're conditioning on high factor B and we're just taking the difference between the uh, levels of factor A. Okay, so two other examples. The simple effect of factor B for low factor A. Okay, so now here um, we are conditioning on, okay. So we are conditioning on low factor A, right? So the simple effect here is gonna be 30 minus 20, which is 10, All right? And then in the last example, it says the simple effect for factor B at high factor A. Okay, so now we're just conditioning on the high factor A here. Okay, so this is going to be 50 minus 40, which is 10. All right, so simple effects are just changes in the values at one level of one of the explanatory factors while conditioning on the other, on one level of the other explanatory factor. Okay. okay. A main effect is a contrast between the overall average of each level. So a main effect basically marginalizes over the levels of the other factor and then takes the difference in those marginalized values. So for example, the main effect um, for factor A is 40 plus 50 over two minus 20 plus 30 over two. So the 40 plus 50 are the values at high factor A 
and the 20 plus 30 are the values at low factor A. So what we're looking at here is a difference in the averages between the, the one level of A and the other level of A. So for factor B, for example, we would do the same thing, but we're gonna average over the levels of factor A in this case. So for example, for factor B, we'll start, we'll go high minus low. So this will be 50 um, plus 30 over 20 minus 40 plus 20 over two. So 50 plus 30 over two minus 40 plus 20 over two. And that gives us, um, in this case, 10. So a simple effect is a contrast at a condition between two levels of one factor while holding fixed at, the, at a level of the other factor. The main effect is the overall difference between the levels of one factor. Any questions so far? Um, I have a question. Yes, sir. Um, so, so say I said uh, the simple effect of uh, factor B for low factor A, would that be like, um, like how how would that work out? Oh, it's the oh, never mind. Yeah, so it's basically just saying like hold fixed at factor A, and then just look at the difference between the two numbers of whatever or of the values of factor B while holding fixed at that factor uh, at the low for factor A. So in that case, like thirty minus twenty, because we're we're conditioned on. Um, a being low. Does that help? Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, it makes sense. Thank you. No worries. Okay. So if we were to go and interpret these values, the simple effect indicates a change which can either be positive or negative in the mean response of one factor. Well, in the mean response across levels of one factor while holding fixed at the level of another. Okay. So for example, because like, so for example, when we look at the simple effects in this, in this illustration, every simple effect is positive, right? So we always went high minus low, so what we're showing is every simple effect indic indicates a positive system. So given that all simple effects are written as high minus low, we can show that the simple effect is showing an increase in every single situation. So because all of the simple effects are positive, we are seeing an increase in mean response as we shift from low to high level. Now, the main effect would be interpreted in the same way, except now we're talking about average change across one level of a factor compared to the other level of that same factor. So for example, factor A, which had a main effect of 20, this is saying that the average response increases as the level of factor A changes from high to low. What does factor B show? Well, that would actually show the exact same thing because we can see that as the levels of factor B change from low to high, we have again a positive increase. So we can write here, the main effect for factor B indicates that average response increases um, as the levels of factor B shift from low to high. Okay. 
So what we are finding here, when we take like a step back and look at the overall picture of what we've discussed so far, all of the simple effects are showing us that when we move from low to high, we see increases in the means. The main effects are showing us that when we move from low to high, we are also seeing increases in the means. So this is a system of agreeances. So we can see everything is trending positively as you shift from low to high. Now these, val this, um, these conclusions can also be represented through what is called an interaction diagram. An interaction diagram is basically just a plot, like a scatter plot that shows the mean values and how they have changed across the levels of the variable, right? So for example, excuse me, for example, this is the interaction diagram for the, the simple illustration that we are studying on in, uh, to define the simple and the main effects. Okay, so if we bring that little table over again, I'm just gonna grab it from the slide here. Okay, so if we pull this table over, What this interaction diagram is actually showing us is just a visual representation of what's given inside this table. Okay, so in the table, we have these mean values. No real point in copying it given that I just erased all of it, eh? but so we had uh, 20, 40, 30, 50. So you can see that what the interaction diagram is showing us is literally, literally these numbers, right? So this point here, this is 50. So this is the X bar for high, high. This point here, this is 40. This is the X bar for high, for low high. Okay, this point here, this is 30. This is the X bar for high, low. And this point here is 20. And that's the X bar for low, low. So you can see that the Y axis of the interaction diagram, this is the value of the response. This is the value of the average response, I should say. So this is going to be measured in terms of the variable of interest. The x-axis is one of the factors, either factor A or factor B, and it has two markers, or it has um, A markers, one for each of the different levels of the factor. So in this particular situation, factor A has two levels, which are low, high. So you can see that we just have a marker for low and a marker for high. And then the last part of the interaction diagram is a legend that uses a line type to designate the levels of the other variable. So in this situation, we're using a solid line to represent low for factor B, and we're using a dashed line to represent high for factor B. Now the interaction diagram is used to um, visualize how the average responses are changing across the levels of the variables. And in this particular situation, you can see that um, we have two parallel lines. Parallel lines in an interaction diagram essentially just represent agreement between the systems. When you have situations where the lines are not parallel, we have what is called interaction, which basically means that there's a treatment combination that's driving a change in mean response that doesn't agree with the overall picture, if you will. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. Now, some of the little things that we can pick apart just from studying the interaction diagram. If you compare, for example, the differences between the points on the connected line. So let's say that we took, if we draw a solid line from this point to this point, Okay, and then we draw a line from here to here. The height of this line okay, is 20. That's a simple effect. Uh, 
of A at low B. Okay, so the interaction diagram, the effectively like the slope of the line in this case, represents the simple effect across the values on the x-axis while being fixed at one of the levels of the other variable. And that would be the same thing for the dashed line. So if we drew kind of a similar illustration here, um, okay, well, I'll just sort of mark it down. Well, actually, I, I don't wanna like overcrowd it, but so the difference between the points on the same line type is a simple effect. And then it also follows that the difference between two points is gonna be a simple effect for the other variable, right? So for example, here to here, this difference is simple effects of B at high A. Okay, so the interaction diagram actually displays the simple effects that we talked about before. And they're found just by comparing the points on the same lines and comparing the differences between the stacked points. Now the main effects are found by comparing the averages between the stacked points and the points on the line. So for example, if we take, this is the average here and this is the average here. So this would be X bar for high B and this would be X bar for low B. Right, so you can see the differences between this point and this point. That's going to be um, ten. Yeah, this is going to be a distance of ten, and that's the main effect for factor B. And then if we compare the differences in the averages of the stack points, that's the main effect for factor A. So I'll just use a slightly different marker here. So if you take the average here and the average here, so red dashes show difference in main effect for factor A. Okay, so what we're building up to is we can use an interaction diagram without value, actually, to determine if we have evidence of main effects and evidence of simple, well, if we have evidence of main effects, and then we'll build up to the idea of the interaction effect. The simple effects are visualized on the interaction diagram, but we're not overly interested in those. What we're interested in are the idea of the main effect and the idea of what is called an interaction effect. So I'm gonna show you what I mean by that momentarily. And then we're gonna summarize all of this work so that you can see how to read the diagram in different situations. <clears throat> so from that diagram, the preceding diagram with the parallel lines, we can see the two main effects. So when we look at the diagram, you can see that this, the red dash at high A is not the same as the red dash at low A. So the difference in the averages of the stack point indicates a main effect. If they were equivalent, that would be no main effect. Similarly, the averages of the two line styles are also different values. So that indicates another main effect. If the two lines crossed right in the middle, that would be no main effect for that variable. Now, finally, because the lines are parallel, this indicates lack of interaction. So interaction is present when the lines are not parallel to one another. So we'll see an example of that momentarily. Okay, so interaction refers to a difference in a simple effect of one factor at different levels of the other factor. Basically, when you look at the previous plot with the parallel lines, you have a system where the simple effects the direction of the simple effects agrees with the direction of the main effect. Interaction occurs when the direction of the simple effect does not agree with the direction of the main effect or differs in magnitude um, from the main effect. Okay, so for example, just so that we can see what this would look like. In the table below, 
we have the same structure of table that we had before. It's a two by two factorial design, but in this situation, we have the following table of means. So 6860, 6597. So you can see just from looking at this table that the simple effect for A1 between the levels of B is 68 minus 60, which is positive eight. However, the simple effect for um, B at A2 is 65 minus 97, which is negative uh, 32. Yeah. So now you can see that we have, when you move across A1 from B1 to B2, you have a decrease. But when you move across A2 from B1 to B2, you have an increase. So we have um, a conflicting result. If we build an interaction diagram, for that study, we get the following um, output, okay? So in this situation, the main effects are um, defined exactly like they were before. So if we consider these two dashed lines here, okay, so red dashes show main effect for A. So because those two dashed lines are not at the same height, that indicates that we have a main effect for factor A, which just means that the mean at A2 is different from the mean at A1. Then if we consider the midpoints of the two line types, okay, we can see that um, the blue dashes show mean effect for B. And that's the same idea as with A. Basically, the midpoints of the lines are not at the same value. So the midpoint of the dashed line is around 80, and the midpoint of the solid line is like 67. So this is showing that we have a difference in main effects for B. Finally, we can say, since lines are not parallel, we have evidence of an interaction, right? So when we have um, lines in our interaction diagram that are not parallel with each other, that indicates that an interaction could be present. In this particular case, what the interaction is referring to is the fact that if you consider how the means change from A1 to A2 for the static approach. So if you look at the solid line, you can see that at A1, you have a mean around 67. And at A2, you have a mean around 65. So that's a decrease. So when we use the static method, the response variable decreases as you move from the salacious to the basalt. But when you use this kneading approach, if the system had no interaction, you would see the same decrease. So if the system had zero interaction, you would have A1 at B2 being where it's located, but then A2 at B2 would be lower than A2 at B1. But instead, what we see is that there's something about the combination of A2 and B2, so the kneading and the basalt approach, that drives the response variable up. So this particular combination of levels creates a specimen whose response variable is higher than it is if you consider the static approach and that basalt combination together. And that disagrees with the trend that's observed when you move from salacious to basalt for the static approach. Okay, so the, inner, the idea of interaction is referring to a, a treatment combination that creates a response that differs drastically from what we saw when we considered only the other treatment combination. So when we use these interaction diagrams, 
effectively what we're doing is we're comparing the averages of the stack points to one another. We're comparing the averages of the lines to one another. And we are looking to see if the lines are parallel or not parallel. Those are the three main things. And when the interaction diagram has two stack point averages that are not the same, that indicates a main effect. When the interaction diagram has the midpoints of the lines being different, that indicates a main effect. And when the lines are not parallel, that indicates potential interaction. Right. Um, yeah, so three minutes left. Um, okay, so let's just work through a few illustrations of that idea just so you can see what I mean. Um, okay, so on this slide, we have six different interaction diagrams. And the question is basically, is there a main effect for A, is there a main effect for B, and is there interaction? Okay, so if we consider the first plot, we'll write A, B, interaction. So when we look at the first plot, to compare A, we take the midpoints of the stacked values. So you can see that A1 average versus A2 average is the same number. So that indicates no main effect for factor B. So these two value, dash values line up. That's no main effect for factor B. Then we compare the averages of the stacked lines. You can see that B1, the solid line, is higher than B2, the dash line. So these are not the same number. That indicates a main effect for factor B. Finally, we can see the lines are parallel. So that indicates no interaction because we don't have any contradiction or we don't have any kind of crossover in the mean responses. All right, in part two, we start by comparing the stack points of the lines. So these lines sit right on top of each other, but for A, we're comparing the two dashes. So we can see that at A2, we have a higher value than at A1. So that means that we have yes for a main effect for A. Then we can see that the two, the two lines are sitting on top of each other. So their average is gonna be at the same point. So that indicates no main effect for factor B. Finally, the lines are parallel to one another. So that indicates no interaction just like before. All right. Okay, in part C, we start by comparing the dashes again. So you can see at A2, the average is higher than at A1. So that indicates interaction. If we compare the midpoints of the lines, we can see that the dashed line has a higher value than the solid line. So that indicates a main effect for B. And now we can see these lines are not parallel to each other, but they're not crossing each other. So it's not as an extreme an interaction as we would expect uh, when the lines cross. So we would say yes, but weak. Right. Okay, so it's 150. Um, so when we come back after the break, I'll review these ideas and the definitions and then we'll go over these diagrams again so that we can get an idea of how to read them. Um, but in closing, have a good reading week. Um, we have a midterm on March 1st. We have assignment three due this evening, and then there's a lab assignment that's due after the break. And um, we will pick up where we left off after the break. There will be an, a fresh assignment for you guys to work on. And um, yeah, have a good reading week. And if you have any questions, as always, uh, please let me know.